Hello, I'm Steve with Eberspacher. Today we are going to learn about using our Edith computer diagnostic program with an Airtronic heater. First connect the test harness starting from the heater to the computer, then locate the Edith icon on your desktop. The program should open to the gray home screen. If you receive this serial interface message, then you need to make sure that you have the diagnostic plugged into the proper port or map Edith to the proper port. Once you click OK, the COM port selection window will open. Please contact us if you require additional help. From the gray home screen, select the heat icon. The heater in the test selection window will open. There are three columns, the heater family or type, heater model number, and the tests available. First, choose the type of heater. You may have to use the scroll bar to read the entire type description. In our example, we are choosing the Airtronic heater type. Next, select the automatic detection line at the top of the model selection, or you can use the scroll bar and locate your model number off the heater. The following tests are available. General data shows the operating hours, the functional check. As long as the heater is active and connected to Edith on my computer, I am recording the heater operation, whether it be three minutes or three hours. And the switch on component. This is testing the heater components at the proper voltage. The error tab or fault codes is available on each test. The first thing I'm going to do when working on a heater is the visual inspection, then I will connect Edith Diagnostics and perform a general data test. Select the test and click on Start Test. The tabs in black are available during this test. First we will look at the error tab. This shows the AF active fault and the historic fault codes F1 through F5. F1 is the most recent and F5 the oldest. Once a new fault code occurs, the old ones will move down a position. AF reads zero. This means when the heater test was activated, there was not a fault detected. As an example, if I unplug the fuel metering pump, this would create a code 48, metering pump interruption. AF would read 48 and F1 would read 48. The historic fault codes F1 to F5 do not have a timestamp associated with them. This means that I do not know when they occurred. I want to record these for reference, but do not repair a historic fault code. Next, select the General Data tab. This tab will show the overheat counter, safety time exceeded count, and the operating hours. The information above the overheat counter is related to the heater ECU and programming. It does not reference the heater serial number. The information that is shown will depend on the ECU revision. Our screen is referencing an Airtronic heater, so let's look at the breakdown of hours. Total hours is 792 in 23 minutes. The breakdown is power at 75, high at 87, medium at 120, and low at 253. This heater has operated about 30% of the time in low. If the low percentage is 50% or more, it is indicating that the heater is not working very hard. It needs to run more in the higher levels to stay clean burning or the heater is too large for the application. Below the operating hours is adjustment or standby. This is when the heater is active but the burner is not in operation. This heater has spent about 25% of the time waiting for it to cool down and then the burner will restart. This concludes the general data test. I need to record this information. The first way is to print it. Select the print icon and the comments dialog box will open. I use this to record information like the work order number, the unit number, the shop and technician ID. If I am printing this, this is a great place to record the heater serial number. Remember, the serial number is needed for all warranty. Otherwise, when I stop this test, I have the ability to save it. I need to print it or save it for warranty reimbursement. For warranty or reference, I can access save files by selecting the folder icon next to the heat icon. I must have the Edith program to open these files. Once I stop the test, Edith will return to the home screen. I click on the heat icon and the selection window reopens. I am still connected to the same heater, so I select the next test, which is the switch on component. This is when I select the error tab and then the delete button to clear historic fault codes. Remember, I have already recorded these during the general data test. 
The switch on component test allows me to test each component. The standard default time is 30 seconds and cannot be changed with the exception of the fuel metering pump. I could use a higher value here to prime the fuel system on a new application. I select the component to be tested and then click the execute button. It will change to cancel during the test. These tests allow me to test the component at the proper voltage. If there is a fault here, then the air tab will automatically open. Once I have tested all components, then I will hit the stop button to complete the testing and Edith will return to the home screen. I select the heat icon button and the window reopens. I choose the next test, the functional check or the heater operation. When the test begins, the select mode window appears. I select the heating set point input control and use the controller inside the vehicle to adjust temperature. Now the function test will begin. You can see the active components in green on the left hand side of the screen. The temperature values are in Celsius. You can see the initial start is indicated in blue. Once the flame is detected, this will be indicated in red. All values with a checkbox can be selected and then viewed on the graphic tab. The time span is the width of the chart and can be changed using the time span box in the upper left. The measured values is skewed by the highest value being monitored. The legend on the right will show the color of each selected item on the graph. In our example, we have the blower motor selected in green. As the blower motor increases in RPM, then the other values lose definition. Once I have completed this test, then I will hit the stop button and I have an opportunity to save this test. The test file can be emailed to our technical department for evaluation if needed. If this is a warranty, then I need to save the test. I should have the first function test showing the heater faulting. I will make the repair as required and then complete a second function test. The test saves that I need for warranty are general data, function test one showing the fault before repairs, and function test two showing the correct heater operation. The three files will be emailed to our warranty department referencing the claim number. Remember, the serial number is needed for all warranty. Always conduct a visual inspection before working on a heater. Thank you.